You are in the meeting now. Recording in progress. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are y'all today? Thumbs up, awesome. We had uh, friends over this weekend uh, from Arkansas and um, a mother and her daughter. And uh, the daughter taught our two-year-old how to do a thumbs up. Um, so, my two-year-old son now knows how to do thumbs up. So, every time y'all do thumbs up, I'm going to be thinking about my kid doing thumbs up. He likes doing thumbs up now. Um, I hope y'all had a good weekend. Um, I apologize for not being here on Friday. I um, have not been feeling good. I'm going to go see the doctor tomorrow figure out what's going on, but I'm here today, um, and I'm here to answer your questions uh, over assignments six and seven. If you have anything over assignment five, I'll be glad to answer those questions as well. A couple of notes. Um, I've been, I know that your first two quiz grades have been posted on Blackboard, um, the assignment grades, I'm not sure um, what assignment, if I got week one and week two assignments graded yet, um, I've been having some technical problems with uh, the program that I'm using, trying to get things to sync, um, but I think I should be getting back on track this week. So it's been an interesting first two weeks. Let's hope that the third week uh, goes rather smoothly. So, how can I be of assistance to you? Um, actually, I have a question. Yes. Yeah. So, um, the assignment says to check our answers. Do you want us to check all of the answers, all the solutions? So, um, which which homework set are you looking at particularly? Uh, assignment six. So, the reason that you want to check your answers. Um, I'm looking at assignment six, um, especially the uh, radical equations, the equations with uh, rational exponents, and the absolute value equations. Uh, so there's three blocks of equations in there. The reason that you gotta check your answers is because if Um, because you may, your the process of solving may lead you to an answer or an answers plural, where one or more of those answers don't actually work in the original 
uh, equation. So, without working through a problem, I could say like on any of the problems, maybe from uh, excuse me, from the radical equations, you might end up with a quadra quadratic equation that you got to solve. Quadratic equations can have up to two answers. Well, if one of those answers um, leads you to taking the square root of a negative number, well, uh, we don't we don't use um, in real life, uh, we disregard square roots of negative numbers, so that would be a uh, answer that you would not, uh, that would be an answer that's false. So, the reason I say check your answers is to say, make sure that you check your answers because one or both of these solutions may not actually work in the original problem. So, to answer your questions, that's a long way of answering your question to say, yes, you got to check your answers. Whether you do that mentally or off to the side doesn't matter to me, but um, if you put down an answer that doesn't actually work in the original problem, then you get points deducted. Oh, okay. So we can do a mental So you can do failure. So we can do a mental check? Yeah, you can do a mental check. Um, that's, that's fine with me to do a mental check. Um, so, anyways, I hope that answered your, that was a long way of answering your question. I apologize. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Did anybody have any questions from assignment five? The quadratic equations? Number 16 on assignment 5. 16 on homework 5. Okay, let me get there real quickly. Number 16, is that correct? Yes, sir. We have a 2x squared minus a 7x plus 3 is equal to 0. Um, so, <coughs> this one says to solve by completing the square. Do you want me to work, work through that process? Is that what you need? Okay. Okay. All right. We'll start off by uh, moving the three to the other side. Okay. 
And when it comes to completing the square, we want the coefficient in front of your uh, x squared to be 1. So we'll divide everything by 2. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to add b over 2 quantity squared to both sides. So b is the negative 7 halves, so that's going to be a negative 7 halves all over 2 quantity squared. All right, so... Um, what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite that 2 as a 2 over 1 and we'll just bring it up to the numerator so this becomes a negative 7 um, that's going to end up being um, 7 halves times a 1 half that's going to be a negative 7 fourths squared is going to be equal to uh, 49 over 16 so this is what we're going to add to both sides. So this becomes x squared minus 7 halves x plus 49 over 16 is equal to negative 3 halves plus a 49 over 16. Now, the cool thing over here is if you just follow the pattern that I talked about in the notes, we already know the factored form of this. <coughs> the factored form of this is going to be x minus whatever b over 2 is. So before you squared b over 2, we had a negative 7 fourths. So we'll put negative 7 fourths squared is equal to... Well, uh, we got to do some work over here. Um, we need to rewrite this so that they have a common denominator. So, looks like I need to multiply 3 halves by 8 over 8. So, that would be a negative 24 over 16 plus 49 over 16. And the difference between... 49 and 24, um, this is going to be positive, so 49 minus 24 is going to be a 25. Uh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. You know why this is beautiful? Because in the next step, i got to get rid of that exponent of 2, which means I'm going to square root both sides. And over here, why this is beautiful is because 25 and both 16 are perfect squares, so I can take the square root of them. So we'll square root both sides. <coughs> and um, let's see, we want to include our plus or minus notation. So we have x minus 7 fourths is equal to plus or minus. So we can take the square root of both 16, 25 and 16, so that becomes 5 fourths, oh, which is lovely because now these have the same denominator. So this means that x is equal to 7 fourths plus or minus 5 fourths. So x is equal to let's do the plus let's do the it doesn't matter uh, let's do the plus seven plus five is twelve so that's going to be twelve fourths and then x is equal to let's do the minus seven minus five is two so that's going to be two fourths simplify we get x is equal to three and x is equal to one half. <coughs> All right. Um, I kind of plowed through that problem. 
Um, do you have any questions about how we approach that problem uh, solving by completing the square? The first thing you ask, does it make sense? Yes? No, sir. Uh, you good? All right. Um, I always, um, so a little, <coughs> excuse me, I apologize. So, um, two things I want to say about completing the square. One, um, we're going to approach, use, we're going to use this method for completing the square um, at least one other time during the semester uh, when we talk about uh, equations with circles. It'll come up again. Um, and two, um, while I realize that it's probably not always the most uh, convenient method for solving, um, some people actually like it. Some people prefer it over the quadratic formula. Um, I only, I, when we have our first exam that has quadratic equations, typically I just say solve and solve by the method of your choice. Um, so you can choose to so solve using the completed square or quadratic formula or a factoring or whatever method works best for you. But I typically always have at least one question that says solve by completing the square. So make sure you know this process because you can be pretty much guaranteed that there will be at least one question on the exam that says solve by this process. And I want to see those steps taken to solve by this process. All right. How else can I help? Uh, I have a question on number two. Will you, what, what assignment and what number again? Uh, assignment six, number 14. Assignment six, number 14. Do you, do you just need me to work it out? Uh, yes, sir. Problem number 14. Six x raised to the 5 halves, <coughs> excuse me, minus 12 equals 0. So, what we want to be, what we want to do in this particular problem is just like solving a linear equation, we want to isolate the x to the 5 halves. We want to get that completely by itself. So we'll start off by adding 12 to both sides. And then we can uh, further isolate x by dividing both sides by 6. So the, the idea that we want to employ here is this. If you have x raised to the a over b, and you raise that to b over a, using the power rule for exponents, this becomes x to the a over b times b over a, which is just x to the 1. The reason is because you end up with AB over AB, which is just 1. So by raising it to its reciprocal power, we end up canceling out the 
<coughs> excuse me, we end up getting rid of this five halves exponent that's attached to the x. So we're just going to take both sides and raise them to the two fifths. So this becomes x is equal to 2 squared with a fifth root index. Now, a couple of things. Because 5 is odd, no plus or minus needed. If your index is even, the index of your radical is even, you have to include the plus or minus notation. Just like square rooting both sides, you have to include the plus or minus notation. If your index is even, you have to include the plus or minus notation. But our index is odd, so we don't have to worry about that. Let's simplify this. 2 to the second power is 4, so we get x is equal to the fifth root of 4. And there's our answer. Thank you. Does that make sense how to approach that problem? Yes, sir. Great. Um, if I ever am going too fast and you need me to slow down, please uh, chime in, say, hey, Mr. Cook, can you slow down or can you go back a page? Um, can you re-explain something? Please ask, um, chime in, that's what this time is for. Um, remember that uh, these uh, sessions are being recorded and as soon as my technical person gets the videos uh, uploaded to YouTube uh, just just check out that link that I posted in Blackboard and you can watch uh, that day's lecture okay what else can we look at Can you go over number 30 on assignment 6? 30 on assignment 6. Okay, ball still on vertically upward, its height s in feet at the end of t seconds is given by approximately by the formula, so let's write down this formula. So there's our formula. S is equal to um, height in feet, um, T is equal to our time in seconds. <coughs> we are given that G is equal to 32 and 
V naught. So that's a V with a subscript of zero or a subscript of O, we call that V naught, um, is equal to the initial velocity. If the ball is tossed with an initial velocity of 80 feet per second, how high will it go in three seconds? So we are given some additional information. V naught is going to be equal to 80. And how high will it go in three seconds? So that's going to be 3. So let's plug in what we have. Um, the question is, how high? So this is our unknown. So S is equal to V naught times, so that's V naught times T, so that's V naught times 3 minus 1 half times G times, uh, oops, G is 32 times T squared. And we want to essentially evaluate this. So did you get to that part right there? Yes, sir. Need me to finish it out? It's fine. I'm sorry, what? No, sir, we're good from here. Okay. The more interesting question in my mind would have been something like, um, more interesting, would have been something like this. If S is equal to, um, let's just make up a number, 180, find T. That would have been the more interesting question to me. <coughs> you have 180 is equal to 80 times T minus one half times 32 times t squared. That's the more interesting question. Um, this ends up being quadratic. Um, which what I would do is I would set this equal to zero. Um, Half of 32 is going to be 16. So you'd end up with a negative 16 T squared plus 80 T minus 180 is equal to zero. Um, <coughs> I guess, or you could have moved everything over to the other side, 16t squared minus 80t plus 180 equals zero. And then I would solve this guy. That would be the more interesting question in my mind. Anyways. I'll keep that in mind when I make the test. You see what I just did there? 
This was a quadratic e expression that we just had to evaluate. So what I, all I did was I said, well, let's make this more interesting by making the t the unknown. Since t is now the unknown, ends up being quadratic, so you now have to solve this quadratic equation. I would probably start off by factoring out, I'll call it a GCF, and then I would see if it factors or use the quadratic formula. Any other questions that we can help you with? Assignment 6, question 10. <laughs> Did you say question 10? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm glad someone asked about one of these. <coughs> Problem number 10. Square root of 2x minus 3 minus the square root of x minus 2 is equal to 1. So before I get started, I want to I just want to <coughs> mention a couple of thoughts. First of all, the square root of b squared is b. So by squaring a radical, by squaring a square root, essentially you could say that the exponent of 2 cancels out with the radical and it gives you just what's on the inside. And what we want to do is we want to isolate one radical, isolate a radical, isolate a radical to begin. The most common mistake that I see on a problem like this is you put parentheses around it and you say squared and you say cancel, cancel, and one squared. That's not how um, you make the radicals go away. First of all, when you square this whole entire, if you put an exponent and you're squaring both sides, you end up actually having to foil <coughs> the left-hand side um, and you'd end up with three terms rather than two terms. So that's, do not just say, oh, I'm just going to square both sides. That's not how to do this. What we want to do is we want to isolate. So I'm going to start off by moving this minus square root of x, square root of x minus 2 to the other side. Now, I'm going to go through and square both sides. So, we can just apply our thought right here. Radical squared, the, inside, the radical and exponent 2 cancel out. Over here, you have to think about foiling. You have to think about this idea of, oh, this is really a 1 plus the square root of x minus 2 times itself. <coughs> you have to think about foiling. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times the square root of x minus 2 is square root of x minus 2. Square root of x minus 2 times 1 is a square root of x minus 2. Then we get square root of x minus 2 quantity squared. So a couple of things happen. Number one, the two middle terms combine together. So square root of x minus 2 plus itself is equivalent to 2 times the square root of x minus 2. <coughs> 
And then, again, radical squared cancels out, so we have plus x minus 2. So what we've gone through, what we've now done is we've gotten rid of the radical around the 2x minus 3. But we still have this radical, the square root of x minus 2. Now we've got to work to get rid of this radical. So what we want to do now is we want to start thinking about how do we isolate this guy? How do we get him by itself? We'll start off by combining like terms on the right-hand side. Mr. Clopton? Yes, ma'am? I am so lost right now. <laughs> All right. Where do we get lost? After you factored the second term? After I foiled the second term? Yes, sir. All right, so let's start here. When I do 1 plus the square root of x minus 2 times itself, let me draw it out for you. 1 times 1 is the 1. 1 times this square root is that square root. Then we're going to take this square root, we're going to multiply it by 1, you get it again, and then we're going to take the square root times itself, that gives us the square root of x minus 2 quantity squared. Are you with me to that point right there? Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> So, you have the square root of x minus 2 squared. The square root and the exponent of 2 cancel each other out, leaving you with just the x minus 2. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, this right here, little side note. If you have the square root of a plus the square root of a, that's equal to 2 times the square root of a. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. That's how I got this step right here. Square root of x minus 2 plus the square root of x minus 2 is 2 times the square root of x minus 2. Does that make sense? <coughs> All right. So, are we caught up? Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. So back to where um, over here on the right hand side, I got a 1 and a minus 2, so that's going to be a negative 1. I'm going to go ahead and put the x minus 1. So there's the x. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, plus 2 times the square root of x minus 2. So what we want to do now is we want to think about how do I isolate the square root of x minus 2. How do I get that completely by itself? So we can do a couple of things. I can subtract x. That's a 1x, so I'm going to subtract x on both sides. So that's going to give me x, because 2x minus 1x is x. To get rid of the minus 1, we'll add a 1 to both sides. So negative 3 plus 1 is a negative 2. E equals a 2 times the square root of x minus 2. With me so far? Yes? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up. Now, we could divide both sides by 2, but I don't really like that idea because if I divide by 2, I end up with a fraction here. Uh, that's a 1 in front of the x, so I end up with a 1 half. And I just don't want to deal with fractions. Not today. So I'm just going to go ahead and square both sides. So remember... On the left.
left, this is x minus 2 times itself. Now, again, recalling some rules for exponents. This is stuff that we got to know walking into this class. a times b squared is equal to a squared times b squared. So if you have two things that are being multiplied together inside a set of parentheses and then squaring it, that exponent 2 applies to both factors. So I say that because this becomes 2 squared times the square root of x minus 2 quantity squared. Don't forget about that too. <coughs> Let's FOIL the right hand side or excuse me, left-hand side, x times x is x squared, minus 2x minus 2x, that's going to be a minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 4 times x minus 2, because the radical cancels out with the exponent of 2. Oh, boy. Um... Already I can tell that this is quadratic because of the x squared. So let's distribute the 4 here. Now let's set equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 4x on both sides. So that's going to give me x squared minus 8x. And we'll add 8 to both sides, plus 12 equals 0. All right, so now we've got to solve. <coughs> you have a quadratic equation, x squared minus 8x plus 12. Stop. Is everybody with me to this point right here? Do I need to go back and explain how I got this point right here. Anybody? Post? Y'all good? Okay. Now, what I would do is I would factor this if I could. What are the factors of 12 that sum to negative 8? And how about a negative 2 and a negative 6? Set each factor equal to 0. Which then means that x is equal to 2. And x is equal to 6. Now, before I box it in, check. Check. Make sure they actually work. <coughs> square root of 2x minus 3 minus the square root of x minus 2 is equal to 1, and go through and check. And you have the answer key for this problem set, and both solutions work. You plug in 2, that's 4 minus 3, which is 1, square root of 1 is 1. 2 minus 2 is 0, square root of 0 is 0, so 1 minus 0 is 1. Check. Plug in 6, 12 minus 3 is 9, so you get square root of 9 is 3. 6 minus 2 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, so 3 minus 2 is 1. Check. They both work. All right, what else can we look at? Can we go 
over question 17 on assignment 6? Yes. Uh, 17, did you say, is that right? Yes, sir. All right, so you know the 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 title of this is a quadratic type equation. <coughs> how do we know it's quadratic in type? Here's how you know that it's quadratic in type. Note that x to the one half quantity squared is x to the one half times two over one, which is equal to x over one. So it's quadratic in type if you can square the variable of the middle term and get the exact variable of the first term. That's what makes it quadratic in type. <coughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to do a substitution. We're going to let u be equal to x to the one half. <coughs> and so what ends up happening is If u is equal to x to the one half, then u squared. We already we already made this note. If you square x to the one half, you get x. So you end up with two u squared. U squared is the same thing as x. So I'm replacing this x with u squared. Minus three u plus one is equal to zero. So now you have a quadratic equation. The original equation was quadratic in type because if you square the middle variable, you get the first variable. But it's not quadratic because quadratic equations have the highest degree of 2. And now we can solve this guy. I would solve by factoring. So 2u and u. <coughs> Um, let's see. Looks like we need a uh, square root of factors of 2 that add up to negative 3. How about that right there? So 2u times u is a 2u squared. Um, I'm running out of time. Um, we get a negative 2u minus 1u. That's a negative 3u. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Okay, this then means that um, 2u minus 1 is equal to 0, and u minus 1 is equal to 0, which then means that uh, u is equal to a 1 half, and u is equal to 1. All right, are you with me to that point right there? Yes, sir. Now, this is telling me what u is, but I don't I don't want to know what u is. I want to know what x is. So I have to come back to my substitution. If u is equal to x to the one half, this then becomes x to the one half is equal to one half x to the one-half is equal to 1. Now we need to solve for x. And 
I would note that x to the one half squared is equal to x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides. So we get x is equal to 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. And then 1 squared is 1. Your conference is scheduled to end in two minutes. Does that make sense? Any questions over that? No, sir. <coughs> okay. Um, the remaining two minutes. Um, so let me talk about what's going to happen for the rest of the week. Um, my intention is to be here. I hope. I hate missing class. Um, I usually say I'm, I'm going to come to class even on my deathbed. So you know that I was not feeling good on Friday if I didn't come to class. Um, for this week, we had six and seven, assignment six and seven. If I would say go ahead and I know that on the 15th, I'd say we continue six. Um, I'll be more than happy to address questions over assignment six, but go ahead and start taking a look at assignment seven. <coughs> that way, if you have any questions over assignment seven, we can also address those on Wednesday. Um, and if the worst case scenario is that I don't, um, I treat Friday like I did last week where I just don't come to school and uh, y'all have a quiz. Your conference over. is now over. Goodbye. That's the worst case scenario. So I'll see y'all hopefully on Wednesday. Take care. Stay safe. Be healthy. Bye.